Hey everybody, so in this lecture we're going to be talking about density, and then we're going to be talking about a concept that we call specific gravity, sometimes also called relative density. Now, uh, to start with, I actually want to take a step back and define the concept of mass. Now, mass is a very difficult concept to define. Really, I'm going to have to define it abstractly as uh, stuff, or the amount of matter that's present. And so, that's a very awkward definition, but essentially what mass does, uh, one of the main properties of mass is that uh, especially this is especially the case on a large scale is that it attracts other things with mass. And so for example, the equation for gravity, which we don't need to know for the MCAT, but it is still interesting, G, which is uh, the gravitational constant, it's a constant, times mass one, the mass of object one, times the mass of object two over r squared, the distance between the objects. And so GMM over r squared, we can see that the more massive one or both of the objects are, uh, the greater the force between them is going to be. And so that, of course, equals the force of gravity, force of gravity. And so again, we don't need to know this equation for the MCAT, but I do want you to understand the concept of mass. And so mass is really defined in terms of its ability to attract other things with mass, okay? Uh, now, let me erase that. Now, density is essentially a measure of how much mass is present in a given volume, right? So for example, uh, let's say we've got two objects. Let's say we've got object number one, which is uh, a sphere of styrofoam. And then we've got object number two, which is, we'll say, a sphere of lead. Let's say it's a cannonball, right? Which I think actually cannonballs are made of iron, but you know, same idea, right? And uh, these are, let's say, the same volume. So they're the same physical size. But of course, one of them is going to be a lot heavier, right? One of them is going to have a lot more mass, right? And uh, so that mass, of course, when we um, when we when it's on Earth, is going to be attracted to the Earth, and so it's going to feel heavier, right? So, uh, for example, this might be 50 kilograms, right? This might be a very heavy cannonball. I don't know if cannonballs are typically 50 kilograms. Probably not. Um, and then this styrofoam ball might be, let's say, one kilogram, right? Even though they're the same volume, the styrofoam ball is going to be a lot, a lot lighter than the cannonball, right? And so uh, this is what we call density. Density is essentially the measure of how much mass is present in a given volume. So uh, the equation for density is actually fairly straightforward, and it follows from that rather naturally, I think. So density, which we represent with the Greek letter rho, and rho kind of looks like a p, but it uh, it's a little bit more round. So, so, so a p would look like this. It's like a half circle. And then a rho is a full circle. So this is kind of how you, want, you might want to draw it. And in terms of recognizing it on a test question, it looks kind of a little bit more like that. And so rho is equal to uh, m over v. That is to say, uh, density is equal to mass over volume. The mass divided by the amount of uh, space in which that mass is contained, right? And so, for example, um, if we were to see, you know, compare these two, uh, these the the styrofoam. Which let me go ahead and write that actually. and then we'll say styrofoam and lead. Uh, if we were to, to compare these, of course, the volume is going to be the same, right? So this is going to be uh, constant in, in both cases. But of course, this one's mass is going to be, the lead one's going to, its mass is going to be much higher. And so what that means is that its rho is going to actually be 50 times higher than, uh, than the styrofoam ball, right? So rho is higher, and it's 50 times higher because its mass, of course, is 50 times higher. And so we can use this equation to calculate the, the rho, the density of an object, of a given material. Uh, and this is also a constant for a given material. And so if we know the material, let's say we know that this cannonball is made of lead, then we can either calculate its volume or its mass if we're given one or the other, right? And so you know, this is what you might be asked to do on the MCAT. You might be given rho, you might be given, uh, you might be given rho and m and asked to calculate v, and uh, you know any two of these variables will help you to get the third variable, right? Fairly straightforward, I think not too difficult. Now we can use density, we can use uh, the density of one object and actually compare densities of different objects. Um, and this is important because it turns out that more dense objects will sink uh, in less dense objects. So how do you know if something is going to float in water? And the answer, the basic answer is that it, an object that is more dense in water is going to sink in water and an object that is less dense is going to float in water, right? And uh, so we can use what we call specific gravity, 
we can use this uh, as a, essentially a measure of relative density. And so specific gravity is often also called relative density. So I'm actually going to, going to go ahead and change that name and call it relative density. And relative density is usually calculated relative to water. And so the way that we do this is we say the density of object X, so density being rho, so we can actually just say rho of X divided by the rho of water, right? And so when we do that, of course, water is going to end up with a uh, specific gravity or relative density of one, right? Because the, the rho of water over the rho of water is just gonna be equal to one. Um, but what we can do is we can do that with other materials and we can get kind of a relative number. So if their number is greater than one, then we know that they are going to sink in water and if their number is less than one, we know that they're going to float in water. So it's quite interesting, actually, uh, because this very simple number tells us, first of all, it tells us whether the thing is going to float or not in water. And another thing it tells us, another very cool thing it tells us, is what percentage of that object is going to sink in water. So, for example, ice has a specific gravity of about 0 0.91, pretty similar to olive oil. And what that means is that 91% of a given ice cube is going to sink in water. So let me show you what we're talking about. So let's say this is the water line. And uh, let's say we've got an ice cube here. Ice cube is going to look something like this. Maybe it looks like that. And so about 91% of the ice cube, the iceberg, we'll say, uh, is below water. And then about 9% of it is going to be above water. And so we can use this for any of these. So for example, balsa wood, balsa wood is a very, very uh, light type of wood. Um, and so balsa wood, only about 20% of balsa wood will be underwater. So balsa wood would look something like this, probably. If this was like a block of balsa wood, that's supposed to be about 20%. It looks like it might be a little bit more, but you understand the point, right? So we can use this to figure out what percentage of an object is going to sink in water. And uh, again, if it's more than one, then we know that more than 100% of the object would sink in water, which is, you know, it's fairly meaningless. And it means that uh, it means that the object is going to sink, right? And so uh, beyond one, of course, this object is going to sink. And so no amount of it is going to be above water, right? Now, units of density, I haven't talked about the units yet. So let me go ahead and talk about that now. So we said that uh, rho is, uh, is equal to mass over volume and mass can be measured in, so SI units, mass is measured in kilograms. And then volume is going to be measured in meters cubed. And so it turns out that there is no specific unit for density. There's no um, special unit the way, for example, force is measured in newtons. Uh, even though newtons are actually kilogram meters per second squared, we just call them newtons, right? But in this case, with density, we actually just use the units that uh, are present. So kilograms per meter cubed would be a unit of density. And so anytime you see a mass divided by a volume, it's going to be a unit of density. And so one type of a unit you might see, for example, you might see grams per milliliter. That's very common, especially on a smaller scale. Grams per milliliter. And so again, that's that's one method that we might see or one unit we might see. And we know that it's a unit of density because it gives us the mass over volume, right? And so understanding the equation will help us to understand the units. And so when we see those units, we know that we're being given a value of density. They're not always going to tell you that rho is equal to whatever, and rho is a measure of density. They might just why they just give you this number in the passage, and then you have to understand that this is a measure of density, right? By the way, I should mention, um, this is unlikely to be tested, but I should mention that density also uh, decreases with increasing heat. So for example, if we've got a block and we heat it up a lot, then it's going to expand ever so slightly. Now the mass didn't change, and so that means that because the block expanded, its volume increased, and so its density decreased slightly. And so this is not particularly interesting when it comes to solids for the most part. Um, I mean, other than in certain in certain contexts. So for example, wires will, will expand slightly when they're heated. Um, and engineers do have to take this into account, but for the MCAT, it's not that important. What does get important, of course, is when we talk about gases, because gases that are heated up will end up taking up more space. So the volume of a gas will actually increase the more space it takes up, which means that its density it's going to decrease. But we'll talk about gases when we get to gases in Gen Chem. So we're not going to talk about that here. So this is what we want to know about density, uh, basically for the MCAT. We want to know specific gravity. We want to be able to compare specific gravities uh, to one another and understand, for example, uh, that if it's above one, it's going to sink. 
uh, below when it's going to float. And uh, not only that, by the way, just one last thing I want to mention. We also want to be able to understand that specific gravities can be compared to one another. So for example, iron, which has a specific gravity of about almost eight, right? We can say, we can say about eight. Uh, iron is actually less dense than, for example, mercury, which is about 13.5, right? I'm just rounding these so that we can we can have numbers that are a little bit easier to deal with. And so what that means is that iron would actually float in mercury. And so that's quite interesting. And there's actually an experiment that's been done. So you can see this on YouTube of a guy who actually takes an iron anvil, which we know is very dense and would, would immediately sink in water if you threw it into water, but it actually floats in mercury, which is quite cool. And so a lot of really interesting stuff actually floats in mercury, even, for example, lead, which is even more dense than iron, would actually still float in mercury. So kind of interesting stuff. All right, so this is what we want to understand for density, for mass, and for specific gravity for the MCAT.